Welcome back to Catholic Lunch Break on AM 1430. This is the weekly program where we catch up with all things Catholic in the greater Houston area. My name is Wyatt Goolsby. I'm the executive director of this radio station, KSHJ. We often talk about challenges to the Catholic Church, especially for young people of faith. Despite all of the technology and social media, younger generation still struggles with loneliness. Join us now to talk more about that is Gordon Moore. He is the president of Adore Ministries. Gordon, tell me a little bit about Adore Ministries for people who are unfamiliar with this ministry. Uh, give me an overview here. Yeah. Uh, Adore Ministries is a grassroots organization kind of centered on knowing, loving, and serving God. That's kind of our tagline. Mm-hmm. And the way that looks, the way we love and serve God is through partnering with different parishes within the diocese. Mm-hmm. Uh, to serve them, the need that kind of arose when it, when it started, which was uh, youth ministry and churches that are underserved. Uh-huh. Um, and the way we do that now is we, we serve five different parishes around the greater Houston area. And that on the surface looks like uh, youth ministry and catechesis. Mm-hmm. Uh, but our aim, real goal is to really walk with teens and families one on one and to disciple them and just make them feel seen and make them feel loved and to hopefully know and encounter Jesus. So a door ministry, therefore, is made up of it's lay missionaries, right? Correct. Laymen and women. And what what is the central? Is it is it, so? It's a missionary. Yeah. Attempt, so the really. w- same way that someone would think, like uh, you know, someone who goes at, uh, to another country to serve. Right. We're doing that same kind of mission. All of our missionaries fundraise their salary. They have people who support them in that way. We're just doing it in our own backyard here in Houston. Very good. Why is that needed with the generation that's coming up, the younger generation? Uh, well. More than anything, I, I mean, I, I I was really lucky actually growing up when in my youth ministry program having the same youth minister. But there's a big overturn, and I think, um, as you said, kind of something that we kind of found through some research in the past year is just that over about 40 percent or so of the current uh, generation of teens would say that they feel completely alone, and it's a it's a generation who has everything at their fingertips, and yet in a crowd, still feels isolated, and um, and so, like I said, our, our goal of just discipling teens, kind of making sure they, they feel seen, even if it's whether it's praying with them or whether it's just like, hey, let's just talk and let's play games or something simple as that. Uh, it, it's just knowing that there's a constant presence of someone um, who, who knows who they are, who's, who's praying for them. I, I know uh, someone I work closely with now who's been with the door for almost 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, he's had teens who reaches out to them, you know, eight years later, who's like, hey, I just want to say thank you, or like I want I want to reach out to you because I know you're the only person I, that in my life currently I know who can pray for me, um, and it's because you know eight seven years ago he was someone in his life who's like hey if you ever need anything I'm there. So it sets an example in some cases too with Absolutely. these teens or kids that get older, right? And they can reach out to others as well. Yeah. Tell me, you mentioned how long has the Door Ministry been around now? Because you mentioned some... um, it started in 2008. <laughs> it, it started out of Hurricane Katrina, actually, in, in Louisiana, and then uh, was as it kind of formed and you know became more of its a functional nonprofit. That that's where like okay, what's the need that we are serving? And it moved into Houston, mm-hmm. and that need became the underserved parishes for youth ministry. Um, so was, I, I, did, I didn't join Adore until about 2017. Uh-huh. Um, so I've been with it for about seven years now. I joined through the in, summer internship program that we have. And uh, uh, so all that stuff kind of happened lot long before me. But I think it was about 2008. So you do have a have internship program. We do. We do have internship programs every summer where uh, well, s- any we don't really have a certain like age except like you have to kind of be graduated from high school. Okay. Um, but we have missionaries from in college, in school to however old you'd like to be. Um, you can kind of jump and come and join us for the summer and kind of experience that the life of the missionary, what, it, what we do, and then um, we also kind of help foster our own missionary community. Uh, so we don't live in community, but we, we try to f- just uh, be with each other throughout the summer and kind of pour into each other as well. I had mentioned earlier that it can be really challenging for young people now, especially because of social media, all the technology that's out there right now, which could really be a challenge. How do you think you begin to overcome that and really communicate with a person when they might feel lonely or they might feel isolated in some in some sense? Uh, it's because I know it's easy for you and I to say, "Hey, we want to break down walls." Right. Much harder to actually do. Yeah. Uh, persistence more yeah. than anything. I mean, um, it it takes time. One of the things I've noticed this past year, I I haven't been um, 
on the ground now that I'm doing this much with the teens, but w with the parishes and the kids I do get to interact with is um, we're in such a bite-sized media sense that okay. even the model of, I think, what people are used to of like, you know, let's play games, let's give a 10-minute talk, that's too long. Um, oh, at, interesting. Yeah, and so... So, so uh, the attention span is just, yeah. really short. Yes, um, and so I, I think it's getting them to know like this this thing that we have is is taking our attention away and they can understand that but then it's just like all right i'm going to let you and i meet and talk without that and you know f the first you know few times even first 10 times might be completely uncomfortable it's, it's it's just like let's how do we get what do we do what do we say um and so if there's someone who can do that consistently whether it's weekly or on a monthly basis you know while they're you know the four years are in high school to hopefully, you know, six months in, that that becomes normal. It just takes time, like more like anything. Right, absolutely. Well, that's a really great point, that sometimes you just need to be able to sit and talk with somebody, and even that could just be a challenge. Yes. Just to sit in a room and talk with somebody. Yeah. That's amazing. But uh, it's, like I said, it's so important to be able to do that. Um, never thought I'd say that's a skill in and of itself to sit <laughs> in a room and talk with another person, but there, but there you go. Um, how do you guys kind of work in the, the Catholic values and the Catholic message? Because I assume that some of the young people you might reach out to may not be Catholic themselves. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the teens we work with, like I said, we, we, we do work within the youth ministry bounds of Catholic parishes. So uh -huh. a, lot of, a lot of the teens are going through the youth ministry programs that we, we work with. And then, uh, we, you know, so we have Bible studies outside of just the th things for fun. We have Bible studies and catechesis program to help with the confirmation. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, we usually, tr really when we mission outside of that, we try to reach the teens that aren't present in the, uh, the parishes we serve. And those teens are going to be on the streets or in the prisons or, um, or in the schools. So when that happens, it's just, you know, not shying away from what we do or who God is and just saying like, you know, he loves you too. And uh, just kind of, just being the example and the vessel for God of being someone who, regardless of my faith background or yours, sees them for who they are and loves them regardless. Very good. It's such such important to be able to communicate on that level with people in that spiritual way. Gordon, before I go, I do want to ask you if you have any personal favorite prayers, things that you like to pray on a regular basis. Uh, so I, I have two two small kids, a one year old and two year old. We just we've been trying to pray with them at night, um, and so you know. Uh, big devotion to Mary, um, mm -hmm. so just anything related to her, but also like my patron saint is St. Patrick, you know, so I love all just the saints as well as saint, the prayers to Mary and Joseph. That's what we kind of do as a family. Absolutely love that, and a great way to end today's show. Gordon Moore with Adore Ministries. Give me the website. It's adoreministries.com. Very good. <laughs> Simple and easy to remember. Appreciate it, Gordon. And we want to thank all of you who have been listening to this program today on Catholic Lunch Break. Until next time, stay Catholic, Houston.